Hello all and welcome to this video where we look at determining rules for graphs of circular functions. So pretty much like every exercise we've done to date where we've looked at functions, what are special features of them and then graph them. Now we're going to work backwards instead and look at say some pictures or be given some information about those special features and then work backwards and try and find the rule or equation of the special function. Um, the key things for circular functions are our amplitude and period. If once we can find them, we're 90% of the way there. And then from there, it's just sort of working out um, translations as need be. Now, the amplitude can be found from either two bits of information. Generally, from the graph is just looking at um, what's its min, what's its max and min values, <clears throat> and then halving the difference between that. And that's going to be your amplitude. And that um, can also take into account vertical translation. So maybe the max is up at five and the min is negative one. Well, the difference between those is six. So we halve that. And so we get our amplitude is equal to three. Um, so we can do that. The other way that it can be given to you is that you'll be given the range of the function. So the range is between negative two and two. Well, obviously for that case, the amplitude is going to be equal to two. Uh, for period, this is where most people make their mistake is that the period is given by two pi on b, um, and people will look at the graph and they'll see the period might be equal to pi, and they'll make that the b value straight. Um, yeah, they'll make that the b value when what period is pi? Well, we need to make that pi, and then we can then figure out what our required um, b value is from there so for this example here it might be what if we're told the period is six well we can substitute that in so we're putting in six as the period and then we just solve to get b and it turns out b is pi on three so pi on three is what you actually use in the equation so just a reminder there that they are directly related to each other but they're not the same so let's get straight into some worked examples uh, the function of the rule has um, f of t equals a cos n t. Um, find the values of an a and n, write the equation f of t. Uh, we're told it's a cos function and it's starting at its max, so that's really handy. That tells, and we're also given the form, there's no h value and there's no k value. Um, both of those are equal to zero, so there's no translations in this case. So makes it pretty easy to recognize the key details. From this, we can see the amplitude is two, which is our A. And then we can also see that the period, in this case, the time to go from the max back to the max is pi. So we can use that. P is equal to two pi on B. So we found our period was pi, and we're gonna just solve to get uh, b by itself, so we end up getting 2 pi divided by pi is equal to b, so b is equal to 2. And in that case, that is actually technically our n value, so we can finish easy as that, where f of t is equal to a being our amplitude, which is 2. Um, the graph is not reflected, so it's just a positive 2, it's not a negative 2. And then we get cos uh, 2t, and that's it. Another work example, this one a little bit harder. We've got a rule of y equals a sine 2x minus n plus b. Uh, so straight away we can see we have an amplitude. Uh, we're actually given the two. Um, we're trying to find n, and which in our case is actually our h. And then we're also trying to find this b over here. And this is the thing we've got to get used to is sometimes we'll be given letters that we're not used to seeing the spots they are. We need to break it down to what we're used to. If we're used to h and k, well, that's okay. We can work in h and k for now. The other thing we want to be aware of is that if we try to read off our h value, our translation, we must remember we must factorize in there. So let's rewrite our rule first, where y is equal to a sine, uh, a sine. 2 factorize x minus n on 2 since we've taken the 2 out plus b. From here now we can start to just read off all our values. So what is our amplitude? Well we go from 2 up to 5 so my a is equal to 3. Uh, my vertical translation or b which we're used to k 
um, we can see our center point has been translated up two, so that's uh, B, and then our horizontal translation, and this is key as we're used to seeing it in there, so it's technically our H is equal to N on two. How far has the graph been moved across? Well, we can see that it's been moved across pi on four. So now we get N on two is equal to pi on four. And I'm, I'm just gonna go back quickly because I think I rushed that. Because we've factorized this two out, that there is what's used to our H, but it's written as N on two. So we can read off, well, H is our translation, pi on four across this, in this case, but what is there in the actual function? Well, that's N on two. So we have to let N on two equal pi on four, and now we're gonna then be able to solve, figure out what N is. So we get n is equal to 2 pi on 4, which is equal to uh, pi on 2. Um, so that's all our values that we needed. So we can now then say y is equal to, and we can write it either this original way up here, which might be handy, or we can write it that way there. Um, I would give it the way that you're giving it to you in the question. You want to avoid confusing a marker with going, oh, that doesn't look right. Why is there extra sets of brackets in there? Um, we're given this way, so let's write our final answer that way. So y is equal to a, we figured out it was three. Sine two x minus, we figured out n was pi on two. Close brackets, plus and a h or a k value, or b in our case was two, and that's it. Um, you may be sitting there going, hold on, why is it minus pi on two when our graph was went across pi on four? If we take that two out, we could write this as three sine. Take the two out as a common factor, we get x minus. Now, since we've taken the two out, we get pi on four plus two, and that matches what we can see in our graph. It's clearly moved across pi on four. Righto, last example, nice and quick. A function with the rule f of x equals a sine nx plus e or epsilon has a range of negative three to three and a period of four and f of three is equal to zero. Find the values of a, n and e. Well, clearly range of three, that means that between negative three and three, our uh, amplitude is equal to three or it could be equal to negative three. Um, just need to be really aware that is technically the graph could be like that, but it could also be like that. That's just a negative. So let's keep that in mind because we're not looking at an actual picture. We can't tell if it's positive or negative at the moment. Um, has a period of four. So we can use that to find our n value. And we might also rewrite our function in the way we're used to seeing it. So a sine nx plus E, and since we've taken n out as a common factor, and I should write the e as how they've written as epsilon. Okay, period of four. Okay, so period is equal to four is equal to two pi on n. So we get four n is equal to two pi. We're gonna get n is equal to two pi on four. So that's equal to pi on two, so there we go, we get our n value. Okay. And we have an f of three is equal to zero. Well, period of four. There we go. So this is an interesting thing where technically this could have two solutions. We can make this work by if we let a is equal to positive three. Okay. And so if that's zero there, that would be four there. That's two there. Obviously though, we need f of three to be equal to zero. So three is there. So we could move our graph to the right. Um, move it across and our graph would come up like that. Um, and that gives us the required change that we need to get f of three is equal to zero. So that would be completely fine. The other thing we could have though is a could be negative like that. Um, and same thing, we could still move it to the right and 
f of 3 would be equal to 0. Um, we could also even move the graph to the left and still get f of 3 equal to 0, and that's because of the sort of repeating nature of sine and cos graphs. So there's heaps of solutions to this that can make it work. Um, but clearly we can see if we went with let's let, we're going to let a equal to 3. So our base graph before we translate it is going to look like that. Um, that has a period of 4. And it's clear we need to move this across so that that blue dot gets moved onto x equals 3. Um, so how far do we need to move it across? Just going nuts down, Gracie, down. We clearly need h to equal 1. Um, which is then our e on n on here. So we get e on n is equal to and we'll say negative 1 because this is given as a plus sign in here so we'll end up having to put in a negative value in there to get it actually to move to the right and we said n was pi on 2 so we get e is on pi on 2 is equal to negative 1 so we get epsilon is equal to uh, negative 2 on pi There we go. So we can finally write our answer as y is equal to 3 a sine, and we'll write it as they give it, n, which we got was pi on 2 x minus 2 on i. And that would work. And if you put it in your calculator, you can check if that works. But I'm still recovering from surgery, and I'm only allowed to sit in a chair for so long before I have to lift my leg back up. and I'm coming up to that limit, so I'm going to leave that there for you. Um, if you have any questions, like always, stick in the email, put in the comments below, Google Classroom, or ask in class. Otherwise, have a good evening.